Hey everybody, this is Fanfic Foy, and I want to thank you for clicking on this video. I just want to make this quick disclaimer saying that I do not own anything in this video other than my own voice and the own fictional stories that I've created. Also, Theophany did the soundtrack for this, and you can find their album for free with a link in the description. If you enjoy Majora's Mask and the music of Zelda, you should really check it out. Also, I'd like to say that this is based off the creepypasta, Ben Drown, so if you haven't read that or seen it, you might want to go check it out on YouTube. It's really scary stuff, and I hope that it can go hand in hand with what I've created here. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you around for the rest of the series. So whether you came from fanfic.net or you've just stumbled across this, I really do hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys, and have a great day. March 13th, 2001. Detective Elliot sat at his dimly lit desk. A half-burned cigarette was nestled neatly between his ring and middle fingers on his left hand, while his right hand supported his head from slamming directly into his paperwork below. He scratched his head, moving his short, greasy locks from side to side. He looked over to the clock that sat on the corner of one of the disheveled workspaces. 2.32 in the morning. Elliot's dragged his hand across his face and then took a long drag off of the remainder of his cigarette. He'd been working far too much lately, and sleep was something of a distant afterthought. Unfortunately, as a man committed to his work, he couldn't rest until he'd put some dent, even the tiniest bit of progress, into his latest work. The familiar blinking of his desk phone finally forced him to look at it. The light was telling him that he'd not listened to his most recent message. The blinking had gone on for hours now, but he knew if he'd listened to the message, he'd have to respond to his wife, asking where he was and when he was coming home. Detective Elliot's loved his wife, but unfortunately, his work was consuming him. He didn't want to have to involve her. Of course, he knew ignoring her was probably doing far more harm than good. He finally reached over and pressed the playback button. He rubbed his eyes as if to try and wipe away his exhaustion, but to no avail. A very angry version of his wife came over the line. Seriously? Out again? Don't expect me to wait up for you. You better not be smoking again, either. Whatever. See you eventually. Bye. Oh, and I'll just make up another story when your son asks why his father isn't here to tuck him in. Again. A loud clack ended the message, indicating that the phone had been slammed back onto the receiver. Elliot's exhaled in discontent, angrily smashing the remainder of his cigarette into the ashtray that was now completely full on the edge of his desk. His wife knew him all too well. He looked down and picked up a confidential file. It was labeled, Marcus Nielsman, age 12, deceased, water and lungs. He put the first piece of paper down and picked up the one beneath it. Cassandra Celia, age 11, deceased, water and lungs. Frustration began to creep into Elliot's mind. He'd been dealing with this case for weeks. Multitudes of children between the ages of 10 and 13 were mysteriously turning up dead in their rooms. As strange as that was, the cause of death was even more absurd. Each child, upon completion of the autopsy, was confirmed to have been drowned by fluid in their lungs. But not just any fluid, just plain water. H2O. Elliot slammed his fist down onto the desk below. Fifteen children, drowned in their carpets or bedsheets? Impossible. And not within the window of time presented. Two months. There was no link between the deaths either. The only small clue obtained was that each child within hours of their untimely deaths was playing a Nintendo 64 console. Unless the consoles were spewing water at hyperspeeds, there was no way they were drowning these children. What was happening? Elliot's jumped in shock as he heard the door across the room open. Jesus, Elliot's, you're still here? Elliot's turned around to swivel his chair to see his partner, Detective David Matthews. The two had been partners for five years now. David, or Dave for short, was a rather large and stocky black man with a shaved head who always kept the office laughing, even in times of uncertainty and confusion. Times like these. Dave, you scared the holy hell out of me. Yeah, I'm still here. I just can't... Yeah, yeah, I know. You can't catch a break in the case. But that might have all have changed. Elliot's perked up. Yeah? How so? Dave reached to his side and rolled in a black cart with a large cardboard box on top of it into the room. He rolled it over to Elliot's desk and sat down in the chair beside him. There's been another one. You're kidding me. Tonight? Yeah, man. Just got this from the CSI team. We can't take it out of the bags, but at least we can take a look at what's in there. But we best keep this a secret. Elliot's nodded. 
and almost three in the morning any evidence rolling into an office was probably unknown to high-ranking members of the force. However, wrong, or illegal even, as it might be, Elliot's was desperate to find answers. He couldn't bear to answer the phone one more time and tell another parent that the case regarding the death of their precious child was colder than an Alaskan winter. What have we got here? Dave lifted the lid off of the box. Well, let's see. He reached into the box and pulled out what looked to Elliot's as a controller to the Nintendo 64 console he'd purchased for his eight-year-old. One Nintendo 64 controller, black. This was in the little guy's hands when they found him. Elliot's took the plastic encased controller and looked it over. Nothing seemed to miss. He placed it gently on his desk. What else do we have? Dave, again, reached into the box and pulled out another clunky piece of equipment. This is the console itself. All they know is that it was on when his parents walked into the room. Elliot again took the bag and gave the console a quick once over before rolling his eyes and putting it down. Was the evidence team drunk? Why were they bringing in gaming consoles? Anything else? Something that might actually point to something that would actually solve this case or at least give me something to tell the damn parents? Elliot's voice was now raised. Dave rummaged through the box once more. Let's see. Cords? More cords? Damn, that's a lot of cords. Nope, that's it, my friend. Elliot's closed his eyes, leaned back in his chair, and slammed both of his palms into his face. Under his breath, he sighed his favorite four-letter word starting with an F. Sorry, buddy, I better get this back. Elliot's nodded and reached for the items that he'd sat on his desk. Whoa, hold the phone, I got something else. Didn't see this under all the damn cords. Elliot's perked up and leaned forward in his chair. He could see Dave was squinting at whatever he was holding, trying to make something out. What? What is it? Damn it, Dave! What the hell is it? Shh. Hey, don't these Nintendo games usually come with art on the front of the cartridges? Elliot shook his head in frustration, and Dave turned the item towards him. What the hell are you- Detective Matthews was right. What he was holding was a gray cartridge, which appeared to have its label torn off. But it hadn't been ripped off. The cartridge was smooth and had no sticker residue on it. A word that Elliot's couldn't make out was written on the front of the cartridge in black marker. Let me see that. Elliot's took the cartridge, wrapped in plastic, into his hand. He held it carefully, as if it was of some extreme importance. He pulled the cartridge close to his eyes. It says Major, or something like that. Maybe it's a Major League Baseball game. You know, kind of like Major League Slugger, something like that. Elliot squinted. No. It says Majora. But you're right, these games do usually come with a label on them. I bought a couple for my kid. They all had labels. Elliot's looked up to Dave. Are the bags resealable? Detective Matthew leaned his head to the side and gave Elliot's a strange look. Are you crazy? You know we can't review this stuff when we, until we get cleared to. Come on! We shouldn't even be looking at it now! Well, we've come this far, haven't we? Elliot's didn't wait for a response as he reached into the box and began pulling out the cords of the console. He carelessly ripped open the evidence bag containing it. Are you insane? Do you want to lose your job? Elliot still wasn't listening. He stood over and ran to another desk that had a miniature TV on it. He whisked up the small TV and brought it back to the desk and began hooking up the console. Hello? Elliot's Will! Will! Are you listening to me? Earth to William Rogue Cop Elliot's! Elliot's wasn't, in fact, listening. He was leaning under the table, plugging in the AC adapter and the power strip. On the way back up, he slammed his head on the bottom of the desk. Son of a bitch! Dave, hand me that controller if you would. You're out of your mind! I'm leaving! Well, could you hand me the damn controller first? Dave stared at Elliot's for a second, shook his head, and sighed deeply. Then he walked over to Elliot's desk and grabbed the plastic-wrapped controller. He looked at it for a moment, contemplating on whether or not to hand it over. But he ultimately knew his own curiosity would force him to. He slowly ripped open the bag and removed the controller. He leaned over and handed it to Elliot's, who was on the opposite side of the desk, changing the TV channel to three. Thank you. Okay, it's on. Dave watched as Elliot's moved his hand awkwardly around the controller. He'd never picked up a video game, and it showed. Will, buddy, listen to me. We are going to be fired if they find out about this. Elliot squinted as the TV lit up. The sound was turned off, but something was obviously catching Elliot's eye. Will, are you listening to me? That's it. I'm done this time. Dave turned to walk away. Dave, I'm freaking done, Will. Dave, what? Officer Matthew turned around to see Elliot's rummaging through the papers on his desk. Ben. Ben. Who is Ben? Ben. Um... Dave scratched his head for a second, then he snapped his fingers. 
Ben, yeah, uh, we had a file on a kid named Ben. Not recently, though. It's been at least a few months. Uh, November of last year, I think. His death wasn't ruled as suspicious. Why? Elliot's was wide awake. He felt adrenaline pumping. He continued furiously grabbing papers and comparing them to one another. And what happened to Ben? Dave scratched his head again, as if he didn't want to respond. Ben, uh... Ben drowned. Elliot's heart stopped. He turned his head slowly and looked at Detective Matthews. Then, without warning, he jumped up and grabbed the TV with both hands and turned it towards Dave. Dave looked on in horror as he read the screen. The two data files within the game were both occupied. One on top of the other, they spelled out in all caps, screaming, Ben drowned. Elliot's looked down at the TV and then back at Dave. Yeah, I figured that. Mm -hmm.